<sighs> How is that possible? All right, so the tug test like came a, through. Like a splice here or something. Yep. So let's uh, let's see exactly where this wire broke. So I pulled on it pretty hard, and with the current clamp, I could trace that the current was coming from our test light through the you know the lead on the APP sensor through the little harness through the big harness on its way to this cold joint connector. So I knew this was the wire carrying the current that way. And it was initially open when I touched the harness. But then after wiggling it, it basically turned into a good ground. So it had to be the wire. And I did a good old-fashioned, it's called a Keith tug test. And just pulled it hard and boom, it snapped right there. So now we know exactly where this wire was damaged and you can see if we follow along it's going to be right around this bracket so let's do a close visual inspection of the area right here and do the wiring repair and this car should be back in the road and the owner here is being very patient but we found the problem this is this is going to fix the car permanently all right so i got the harness unclipped and check this out it has been repaired. This is not Honda OEM. You can see like, there's a wire poking through there. Uh, so for some reason, the harness was damaged. So we'll just unwrap the tape. And it looks like it's been a while ago. Maybe that's why the car was sold. Nobody knows. You know, no one could figure this out. So just ship it. And we're going to see what else is hiding in this harness. So that wire was apparently oh, this is this is sweet. I love it. It's a good thing we went for the root cause instead of doing the bypass wire because there's other issues here. Look at that. Here's your problem. Buck connectors. So somehow this harness was damaged in the past. And we have one, two, three, four wires there that are broken, even five. And the one we pulled out was, in fact, the ground for APP sensor B. So I'm going to fix this up. Uh, we can do a tuck test on the other shrink connectors. I mean, these are the seal type, but for people who say, oh, soldering isn't the best way use the crimp connectors well here you go uh, we can see that they fail I've never had a solder joint fail that was properly done with shrink wrap so I'm gonna stick to my tried and true method fix this up and we'll be good to go so we can see on scan data obviously APP sensor B ground is now open so it's at its high voltage that that's what was setting the code intermittently with these buck connectors we're gonna get rid of all of them because I pulled another one and it pulled right out. I mean we can do the same experiment here. Boom. <laughs> There's number three. So one, two, three, four. Uh, four wires need to be repaired and then I'm going to inspect the rest of them. I mean, some of them have copper exposed so we can put some liquid electrical tape on there and just make this harness repair last a long time. All right, so for the wires that are a little chewed up, you can see a little copper, I just put a dab of dielectric grease to seal out any corrosion. And once the harness is wrapped in electrical tape, that will be perfectly fine. You can use liquid electrical tape, uh, but dielectric grease works just as, just as well. So all we have to worry about now is these four wires with the butt connectors. So let's get that cleaned up. If the wires are too short, we'll install some uh, extensions. So we're doing four solder and shrink wrap joints. Don't forget your shrink wrap. And the wires are long enough, I just pulled the butt connectors off. And we don't need to do extensions, which saves some time. And these joints are going to be stronger than the wire itself. Be 
beautiful. That's two. There's the third one, so just grab this guy and pull that sucker right off. Very easy. So you know that wasn't a good joint. You just trim the copper a bit. Wrap on there and Rinse and repeat here. Let the solder melt all the way through the joint Do a little tub test And put our shrink wrap right over it And torch it on there Not all shrink wrap is created equal. You want the one with the epoxy or a glue sealer that melts and seals everything. I'd say it's uh, better than these stupid things. Yeah, they were they were crimp, but you can still pull them apart. Okay, so harness is all repaired. Let's just do. A uh, last verification, plug in the scanner, clear the codes out, make sure our signals are appropriate, and we can do the test light check one more time just to make sure that ground is perfect. Alright, so let's clear the fault codes out. Yep. Stop the engine, okay. Okay, clear fault memory completed. Read fault code. Current DTCs. No trouble code there. So last check is we'll look at the live data and load that ground with a test light <clears throat> and make sure that the the signal doesn't change at all. Before, if we load when we loaded that ground, the signal would change um, even though you know once we wiggled the harness, it became good enough, but it should be uh, much better than that. So data stream. And let's see here, APP sensor B, A, and let's do throttle position, A, B, okay. Let's graph them. So right there, 0 0.24, 0 0.49, steady. Let's load the ground and make sure that does not change whatsoever. So, loading the first ground, the one that was known good, you can see the signal of sensor A goes from 0.49 to 
Okay. So that's that's fine. Let's check the green and yellow wire, the one that was actually bad. Let's load that. That goes from 0.24 to 0.27. So exactly 0 0.03 volts. That's totally acceptable. We can do our wiggle checks, make sure our signals are rock steady, and they are. So the repair is verified electrically. Make sure we didn't set any trouble codes. No trouble codes. Excellent. So let's just wrap up the harness and send the owner back on his way. All right, the harness is double wrapped in beautiful Scotch electrical tape and the owner is putting on the original APP sensor because you guys know what I think about aftermarket sensors and electrical parts. So once he gets it installed, we'll verify on scan data that everything is good. It should be, should be perfect. All right, so with the OEM sensor, APP sensor A and B, 0.5 and 0.27, and go all the way to the floor, 4.6 and 2.3. That's good. It's gonna go up and down a few times. Everything's happy. They're all position sensor A and B. Are also happy. I mean, this. It looks beautiful. And one last check, read fault codes. No trouble codes in the current. And read fault code intermittent. That's it, good deal. So, wiring problems, intermittent problems. Sometimes it can be a pain, even though if you can recreate it, you can narrow it down very well. But in this case, it took it took some time to actually find the location of the problem because the, the harness was damaged, but it was wrapped up pretty well that you couldn't instantly see what the problem was. So we got there, got it fixed up. I'll do a one-year guarantee on this, and the owner should be happy driving his Acura. Uh, thanks all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.